So um, I was going to show what the disability arts page looked like on Wikipedia, but uh, I'm afraid if I leave the screen, we may never get back here. So um, anyway, on the disability arts movement page on Wikipedia, there is a little bit of context about the disability arts in American history and a little bit in British cultures and history. And there isn't there aren't any images and there aren't any notable artists in the disability arts movement. And so uh, for this presentation, I was just going to share some female artists that focus on disability and specifically in the area of disability arts. So to, oops, wrong button. So the disability arts movement on Wikipedia is defined as any art, theater, fine art, film, writing, music, or club that takes disability as its theme or whose context relates to disability. So I'm going to share some female artists involved in this movement, but many of those artists also speak to the intersectionality of gender and disability. And these are images that can be found at the Disability Arts International website. Uh, they have a lot of really amazing artists on there. I only chose to pick a few, but if you ever have the chance to go over there and look and see what work is being done, it's a really incredible resource. So our first artist is Julie Cosenza. She's an interdisciplinary artist and researcher who is committed to social change, collaboration, and community engagement. She did a video called Slow that was originally performed as part of her MA in culminating creative project, The Turtle Walker, staging disability, crip, and queer theory in the Women and Gender Studies Department at San Francisco State in 2008. So Cosenza disrupts the notion of the master signifier of disability by using the performative theory of Butler in conjunction with Anzal Dewis' theory of borderlands to discuss the idea of borderland identities for a person with invisible disabilities. So for context, the idea of borderlands from Anzal Dewa describes existing on the margins of different intersecting social identities in a place of hybridity where one cannot be one or the other, but instead are a mixture of both. So in her research, she aspires to disrupt and resist the production of able-bodiedness and disability from the borderlands. And through her inherently politicized work in performance art, she attempts to make her invisible disability of dyslexia visible to her audience. And I have a little clip here. I'm hoping that it'll, can you see it? Or did I leave the screen entirely? Can you see the video on my screen or no? Oh, uh, sorry, I was talking and I was talking. I, okay. I, I see your PowerPoint. I don't see your video. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah, it's the PowerPoint, not the video. Um, and what I think you, um, to do so, you will need to um, stop sharing and then share to the video. There, I think you've done it. Do it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to show a little a little clip of the video. Okay, and then we're going to go back to the PowerPoint, which is here. Okay. And we're back. 
So um, Julie's work is, is really related to the work that I do in disability studies, specifically in invisible disabilities. And she has a lot of really great resources online as well. Um, but I wanted to include some performance artists. So that's Julie Cosenza. Then we have Catherine Sherwood. She's a visual, a visual artist who creates, copy, creates copies of famous art historical works, yet these works are altered to include some form of visible disability. These works come after enduring a cerebral hemorrhage that required her to reteach herself how to paint. So most of her works are of nude women with various skin tones, each having their own form of prosthesis, with their heads donning these spliced images of the artist's own brain scans. So Sherwood states, quote, I have been working on a new series of large scale paintings featuring disabled reclining female nudes that reference medical imagery and disability. I am calling this series Venuses of the Yelling Clinic as I have appropriated art historical images of the female nude in order to challenge canonical ideas of beauty. And then here we have Alice Shepard. I also have a video, so we'll have to bear with me while I switch over. Um, she is a performance artist with disabilities who choreographs and performs complex dances while remaining in her wheelchair. Regarding her work, she does not view her wheelchair as an adaptive device, but as a part of her body. She states, quote, I intend to I attend to the intersections of gender, disability, and race in order to create art that speaks to such conventional and inaccurate platitudes as disability, as genderless and sexless. Black women are hypersexual. I make work that challenges the historical understandings of blackness as a disabled form of whiteness. In all this, I know the beauty of non-white disabled bodies and minds to be paramount. And that is from her artist statement. And then, let's see, I'm gonna pull up a video here. Probably be easier if I embedded these. No problem, working well. <laughs> All right, and then here's a short video. Well, I'm gonna pull the It's really hard to describe to people. It's a dance that is set, in some ways it's just a dance that is set on a ramp. In other ways, the scent is a world about, you know, it transforms the ramp from these ugly metallic objects that you see at the back of buildings to access and makes it a beautiful artistic object. And that's part of the social justice message that, you know, functionality isn't really all there is to access. Accessibility can be artistic and beautiful and creative. And when we took architecture and design and we designed this ramp that enabled us to create a new technique of movement, new movement vocabulary, and descent emerged from the structure, the, the dance of descent emerged from the structure of the ramp itself. All righty, and that is Alice Shepard. Next we have Riva, I believe it's pronounced Lear. I could be pronouncing that wrong. Um, she's an artist, writer, and curator who focuses on the socially challenged body. She's best known for representations of people whose physically embod physical embodiment, sexuality, or gender identity have long been stigmatized. Riva was born in an American, as an American painter, writer, teacher, and speaker, and born in Ohio. She was born with spina bifida and has undergone numerous surgeries throughout her life. Her work focuses on issues of physical identity and the socially challenged body, especially in explorations of cultural depictions of disability. Uh, Lyra is well known as both an artist and an activist in the field of disability culture. In an article in the New York Times, she states, quote, 
but nothing changes a disabled person's sense of self like another disabled person. I am a painter, and in 1995, I was invited to join a group of artists, writers, and performers who were building disability culture. Their work was daring, edgy, funny, and dark. It rejected old tropes that defined us as pathetic, frightening, and worthless. They insisted that disability was an opportunity for creativity and resistance." End quote. This is one of her paintings called Hillary Shoot that she did in 2015. And I believe she did the cover that was on one of the books that I believe Karen is a part of. Um, she has a lot of really oh, beautiful works. And next we have Lisa Bufano. And she is an American interdisciplinary performance artist whose work incorporated elements of doll making, fabric work, animation, and dance. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> <coughs> Lisa was a <clears throat> competitive gymnast as a kid and a go-go dancer in college. After a bacteria infection led to the amputation of both her feet and fingers when she was 21, <clears throat> Lisa pursued stop-motion animation and sculpture at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Bufano's performance and dancing career typically incorporated a variety of prosthetics and props, such as using orange Queen Anne's table legs as legs and arms. But she also included segments where her unadorned body was the focus of her performance. She describes her aesthetic and the aims of her performance in stating, quote, despite my own terror and discomfort in being watched, or maybe because of it, I am finding that being in front of viewers as a performer with deformity can produce a magnetic tension that could be developed into strength. I attempt to channel this tension by exaggerating the mode of physical difference, for example, presenting myself on stilts. And this is one of her performance pieces here called Home is Not Home from 2011. Our next artist is Nancy Fried. She is an American sculptor, painter, and feminist artist. And since undergoing a radical mastectomy, a bilateral ovarian cystectomy, and an appendectomy, she began making small terracotta heads and torsos that express her emotional reactions to these operations. Fried states, quote, my work is about the truthfully rendered middle-aged female figure. Our culture says women should hide the flaws. It says that we are no longer sensual sexual beings when we start aging, get fat, wrinkle, or lose a breast. But we're not Jane Fonda. My torso stands tall and proud without shame or apology for having developed rolls of fat or having lost a breast. My work is classical, definitely not trendy. I hope that it helps to redefine female beauty. And that's a quote from her artist statement. This is an untitled piece that she did in 1991 in ceramics. And then our last artist is I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Sunara Taylor, she goes by Sunny. Uh, she is an American painter, writer, and activist for disability and animal rights. Taylor was born with atherosclerosis and uses a wheelchair. She is active in the Society for Disability Studies and has participated in marches for disability rights. Her newer work, quote, explores visual discourse of disability especially sideshow imagery and medical photography. She states that being disabled has affected her art in more ways than she could know. She says, quote, I not only live in a disabled body, but I identify deeply with disability scholarship, activism, culture, and disability art. Thus, disability enters into my work and practice at all levels, from the making to the content to the very ways in which I see. In relation to her artwork, she claims, these visual narratives construct disability as exotic, freakish, and horrifying, as well as pitiable, tragic, and in need of cure. By interrupting this imagery with paint, I hope to challenge these narratives and present disability as something else, a political issue. And these are my references. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. Um, so my goal was to add in these female artists into the disability arts page on Wikipedia, similar to how we have notable scholars in the disability studies section. 
um, after doing some deep dive um, research on some of these artists, I found that a few of them don't even have Wikipedia pages. So among adding the ones that do and linking them to the correct pages, I think um, it's worth investigating or putting into the next um, wiki storming event to add some pages for some of these artists so they can have some recognition. And that is it. <laughs>